On this week's episode of Tamika's Nuggets, we're going to continue our discussion on spiritual warfare. So stay tuned. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on spiritual warfare. So in last week's discussion, we did talk about Satan, how he tries to tempt us by placing suggestive thoughts into our mind. He wants to see if we'll agree with the thought that he's placed in our mind. And always that thought is contrary to something God has said to us or that he's placed in the Holy Scriptures. So his goal in placing these thoughts in our mind, it's a snare. His goal is to trick us. And the goal is to, number one, get us to not believe that God loves us. Also, he wants us to believe that what God has promised to us will not come to pass. He wants us to to doubt the word of God and the promises of God. He also seeks to destroy our relationship with God. And, you know, Satan hates God and he wants everything that God has. He wants to be God in our lives. He wants to be our God and he wants us to worship him and not worship God. So he seeks to get us to disobey God to sin against God and his word. He wants us to give up the will of God for our lives and not do what God has asked us to do or commissioned us to do or the last thing he's told us to do. He wants us to give up ministry and no longer minister to those in need or bring people to God. And all of these tricks and and, and devices and schemes that he used to accomplish this goal is that's all he wants to do. He also wants us to blame God, to be angry with God because God is not moving fast enough to give us the promises that he has uh, outlined in the Holy Scriptures. Um, if, If we feel like God isn't moving fast enough or it's not happening fast enough as quick as we want it to happen in this microwave society, He wants us to be upset with God and be at odds with him and believe that it'll never come to pass and what God said in his word and what he promised is not true. That's what he wants us to believe. So we talked about the fact that we should be like Christ. Christ was tempted by the devil, by Satan, and he used the Holy Scripture. He used the word as he was talking to the devil. And um, so this caused the devil to flee from him. You know, there was nothing else he could do with Jesus. Jesus believed in God. He would not go against God. He would not turn from God. He would not stop worshiping God. He believed God promises. He quoted the scripture and he wouldn't come off of it, period. And so there was nothing Satan can do with that. So he left, he fleed. And that's what we as Christians should do. We should have faith in the word of God. We should have faith in the promise of God. We should continue to believe and know that God loves us and he's for us and he has our best interests in mind. And we should be obedient to him. We should have the mind of Christ to be obedient, even to our own hurt, to obey God and what he has asked us to do, what he has guided us to do and directed us to do. And uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So what I want to do today is look at uh, Jesus being tempted of the devil. And that scripture reference is in the Gospels. Um, But we're specifically going to focus on the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to look at chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. 
in the Good News Translation. This is a new translation for me. Someone very special to me brought it to my attention and caused me to look at the Good News Translation. So we're going to look at that today. All right, so verse number one says, Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and 40 nights without food, Jesus was hungry. Verse three, then the devil came to him and said, if you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. And Jesus answered in verse four, the scripture says, he's going to quote the word of God. The scripture says, Human beings cannot live on bread alone, but need every word that God speaks. Now, I don't know if you've been on a fast before or fasted um, from food or something that was close to you, um, like maybe TV programming or video games or social media whatever was very uh, close to you or important to you. On a fast, that's a time to separate from fleshy things, things that would seek to control your flesh, um, food, like some people can't turn down sweets or their favorite foods or whatever. Some people have a hard time not getting on social media or playing video games or whatever. And that's the flesh um, trying to get you to do what the flesh wants. And so going on a fast from things that have you controlled, <laughs> so to speak, that's a time for you to quiet the flesh so that you can commune with God and hear from God and communicate with God. And because the flesh and all the distractions of the world and everything you've been focused on, because you're cutting that out, now you can focus. You can tune in, tune in your antennas. You can zone in to God the Father and you can communicate with him. You can hear him clearer. You can focus on the word. You can have more free time to get in the word, fellowship with him, pray, talk to him, listen to him, hear what he has to say, hear how he's directing you, what he's guiding you to do, what your next steps in life would be because you're hearing and you're tuning in and you're listening to him, and you're getting direction from him. So during a time of fast, this is a time that you're getting, I would say, closer in communion with God. So with Jesus being fasting 40 days and 40 nights, um, I'm sure that he was in tune with the father and he was hearing some things from the father. So when he says that, when Jesus says human beings cannot live on bread alone, but need every word that God speaks, we need to hear from God. We need to hear from our heavenly father. We need to hear what he has to say. And we, we depend on him to guide and direct us, to direct our path and show us the next steps for our life and impart in us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So it's important to hear from God. This is crucial. This is important. So, and that's what Jesus was saying. You know, it's important for me to hear from my father. And, you know, I'm not going to command this stone to be bread so that I can eat. I'm fellowshipping with the Father. I'm hearing from, from the Father. This is my time to be with my Father because I love him and I communicate with him and I have relation with him. I hear from him. So one of the snares of the enemy is to separate you from God so that you cannot hear from God. 
so that you cannot be victorious because whatever God tells you, it can change everything in your life. It can completely change your life. So he's trying to separate you from hearing from the father and separate you from him and separate that relationship, that communication, that communing and that fellowship and that relationship. He wants to cut that off. So this, this was a snare that he was trying to set before Jesus to entrap him. So he's very sly in the things that he wants to do to try to ensnare us. Um, one of the other things that, um, well, we did cover the um, hearing from God and the communion with God and the relationship with God. So this snare was to come against those things. So as we continue in verse number five, then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, the holy city, set him on the highest point of the temple and said to him, if you are God's son, throw yourself down for the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up lest your lest their hands that I'm sorry, they will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. So at this point, the devil is quoting scripture. So, you know, the devil was in heaven. God created him. He's an angel. And he was to be a holy angel like all of the holy angels in heaven now. And so he knew of God. He knew of the things of God. You, you know, he, he knows scripture. Uh, don't be fooled. Satan does know scripture. And so now he's quoting scripture to Jesus to try to tempt him in a sly way to say, oh, uh, he'll fall for it because this is the word of God. So he'll fall for this and he's trying to trick him and ensnare him. Remember, the enemy is sly. He uses whatever kind of trickery he can to ensnare you. And what he's trying to do at this point is to tempt him to test God. And what Jesus replied with in verse number seven, Jesus answered, but the scripture also says, do not put the Lord your God to test. So what he's trying to get Jesus to do is test the word of God. So when you test the word of God, there's a bit of doubt in there <laughs> that you don't believe the word of God. So if you got to test it to see if it's going to work or test it to see if it'll be fulfilled, then there's a slight chance you don't believe that what was promised or what was said would take place. And then you're testing God to get him to prove his word, to prove what he promised to you, to prove that these angels were, will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. So this is, this is again, trying to trick, trick Jesus to, to doubt God's word and to not believe and to, you know, test what God has promised. But the word of God says not to test the Lord. So we don't need God to prove anything to us. We don't need him to prove his word. His God is not a man that he should lie. He cannot lie. If he said it, it's the truth and you can bank on it. So that is a, a very sly trick that he's using by bringing forth scripture and what he's saying to Jesus to try to get him to go against the father and go against the word of God. Verse number eight says, then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all their greatness. All this I will give you, the devil said, if you kneel down and worship me. Verse number 10, then Jesus answered, go away, Satan. 
the scripture says, here we go. We're going to quote the word, the word of God again. The scripture says, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, again, remember, Satan wants to be God. He wants what God has. He wants all power and dominion. He wants to be worshiped just like God is. But the word of God, God is a jealous God, the word says. We are to worship God and God alone. So what the enemy is trying to get Jesus to do is disobey God, what he said. He's trying to get him to go against what God said and to get in sin against God and his word. Okay. He's trying to get Jesus to transfer his worship from God, the father to him. <laughs> and also, uh, he wants to take the power from God. Remember, Satan wanted to be in God's position and he wanted dominion. And he said that, you know, he would be as God is. So that's when there was a disagreement in heaven. And before you knew it, Satan was falling from lightning from heaven, out of heaven to earth. <laughs> so, um, so this is how the enemy works. He just uh, tries to trick you to number one, think that God does not love you. That's the first trick he wants you to believe. God doesn't love you. He wants you to believe that what God promised in his word will not come to pass. He wants you to doubt the scriptures. He wants you to, number three, be mad at God. He wants you to be uh, to blame God and be angry with God. Number four, he wants you to sever your relationship with God. He doesn't want you to have communion and fellowship with God. He wants you to, number five, give up the will of God for your life and not do what God commissioned and called you to do. He wants you to give up ministry. He wants you no longer to minister for God and for the kingdom of God. He wants you to give that up and not do the last thing that God told you to do. He wants you to do all of these things. He wants you to no longer be a Christian, no longer worship God, no longer love God, no longer be in relationship with God and be in communion with God. He wants you to give up your love walk and not walk in love with people that you come into contact with. He wants you to be hateful and evil and do things that God has not called you to be. So, I want you to be mindful of the tricks and the schemes that he uses and remember this scripture of what Jesus did. Jesus quoted the scripture. He resisted what the enemy was telling him to do. He did not turn the stone to, to bread. He resisted. He didn't do it. And he quoted scripture. He didn't do it. He didn't throw himself off the uh, temple to test God. He didn't do it. <laughs> so all of these things, uh, you know, God, uh, Jesus was committed to God, to obey God and obey his word. So the last verse, verse number 11 says, then the devil left Jesus and the angels came and helped him. So when, when the devil realized there was nothing he could do, he couldn't get through to Jesus. He wasn't going to penetrate. He wasn't going to conquer Jesus. There was nothing else for him to do but flee. And that's all he can do. So the word says, as you uh, submit yourself to the Lord and resist the devil, he will do what? Flee. That's what he'll do. So remember what Jesus did. Be like Christ in this, in this earth. And as the enemy is trying to ensnare you, just stand firm, resist, and continue to remember the word of God and the promises of God. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. You have a helper. The Holy Spirit is your helper. He is your guide. 
and he speaks to you. He guides you. He gives you wisdom. You know, he's your teacher. He's your comforter. He's your help. So you're not in this battle alone. God has given you all the aid that you need, all the help that you need. And don't discount the angels. The angels are there to protect you and to help you. You have angels assigned to you to protect you. They they are with you always. They are assigned to you. You have your own angels that are there to protect you. And so you have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to worry about. You get in that Holy Bible, read that word, get that word in your spirit, in your mind, so that you'll be ready. You'll be armed to fight the battle, the good fight of faith. So I hope you found this encouraging and I uh, hope you found something that you can mirror in your life when the enemy comes your way and tries to attack you because the battle is real and we are in a spiritual warfare. All right, so I have talked about Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11 in the Good News Translation. I've decided that I do like the Good News Translation. I hope you liked it too. So at this point, I want to go ahead and pray for you as you continue to um, be mindful of the word of God and be mindful of the snares of the enemy as he comes to attack you and attack your family and attack anything that's important to you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace, Lord. We lift you up. We magnify and exalt your holy name, Lord. We recognize that you love us for you loved us so much that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. What a perfect love. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your undying love for us. Thank you, Lord God, for this word that you have given us that is powerful, Lord God, to combat any snares of the enemy, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that we'll read your word and I declare that we'll meditate in your holy scripture day and night, that our way will be prosperous, Lord, that we'll be equipped for and armed for the battle, Father God. We'll continue to be rooted and grounded in your word, Father God, to declare your promises and your scripture over our lives and over our family and our loved ones and the saints of God, the body of Jesus Christ, Father God. We resist Satan and we submit to you, Father God. We resist him and we declare that he will flee, Father God, for he has no power, no authority over us except that which we give to him. And I declare in the name of Jesus, we'll be steadfast in the faith, in the faith and we will not give any power, any authority, any dominion over to Satan, Father God. We rebuke him now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We submit unto you, Father God, for we are your sheep and we'll submit to you and your voice will follow and not the voice of the enemy. And, and we just thank you, Lord God, for this word and this message today. We declare that lives are changed, mind, minds are renewed by the spirit in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I just thank you, Lord, we have a newfound desire and faith to uphold the promises and word of God in our lives and resist the enemy, Father God, and to serve him notice that he will not prevail over us in the name of Jesus. Your word, God, says that we trample upon serpents and scorpions and all, all power of the enemy that he shall not by any means harm us or prevail against us. And we stand on that word because you have caused us to triumph through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we walk in victory, Father God. We know that it's a fixed fight, that the battle is already won because Jesus has already gone before us and won the battle for us, Father God. And we're just walking it out, Father God, in Jesus' name. We just thank you for your promises. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and the power, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
All right. So you be blessed this week and you continue to whip that devil with the word, just like Jesus did. Your example, your champion went before you and defeated the enemy. He's a defeated foe and you are victorious. And I will see you next week. So make sure you tune in. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you found the information impactful. If you like what you heard, please share this video with your loved one. Also, remember to subscribe and click the bell so that you will receive notification when I upload videos. I upload videos weekly. Make sure you tune in next week. Be blessed.